All right, so I'm working on a 6.2. We had a technician work on a 6.2 GM engine, and these are essentially the main culprits that we were dealing with. We have, a, they call it the valve lifter oil manifold, and this one damaged the camshaft. So you can kind of see at the top right here, I don't know how well you can see in the camera, you can see it kind of ground down the camshaft right on that lobe, if I can get to the right lobe, that lobe, okay? So that was on the even side, the even numbered cylinders. I believe it was, it was either number six or number eight on the top there. They approved doing all the lifters, but they were also on a budget. Um, so we essentially just started with replacing what we found was wrong which was the lifters, um, the camshaft itself, which required a ton of labor. You gotta take the front diff out, take a bunch of stuff off, take the heads off, take the oil pump off. You gotta make sure all that stuff looks okay before you put it back together. Um, long story short, we put this one back together and on the highway, when the cylinder deactivation system disables four of the cylinders, it started misfiring. It ran absolutely perfect for about 15 minutes, um, warming up and everything else. Then we noticed that it was cylinder seven now, a different, the other side, the driver's side of the vehicle was misfiring. Um, we took the valve cover off to do the test. When you do that, when you take the valve cover off, essentially what you're looking for is movement. So. You're gonna take the coils off, you're gonna take all the components out of the way with the valve cover, start the engine, you know, just one side, obviously you can't take both sides off. And you're going to look to see which rockers are moving and which aren't. So this system, each solenoid for the four cylinders actually has the ability to stick on, which essentially allows oil to flow instead of that valve movement. So on this engine, it was just number seven. This may be common, it may not be, I don't know. I'm just posting this to try to help somebody else out there that may be trying to diagnose this or test this and figure out what's going on. But cylinder seven, only one of the rockers wasn't moving. The other one was moving normally. So it's almost like one of the lines in these solenoids was stuck open and it was, it was almost like an electrical problem in the sense that the oil was flowing in the path of least resistance. It didn't go beyond the first rocker. So when we did research on testing, it says it should turn both of them off. So neither the intake or the exhaust valve is opening and closing. But on this particular case, it went through, oil flowed through one and it just took out one rocker. So it wasn't moving at all and it was causing that cylinder to set a misfire code. So essentially, when you're looking at this, every single time we do this job, I would recommend doing this oil manifold with the camshaft, if it takes out the camshaft, as well as all the lifters, and you may need to do a couple sensors, like the MAP sensor, that influences this system, or you can try to do a delete on the system. Basically, if you just get rid of this, it will function normally but you have to update the PCM software. I don't know exactly, I haven't done that on this new of a vehicle yet, so I don't know exactly how to delete that system and make sure there's no codes involved. Um, I'm sure there's a program or a, you know software update that you can do and customize it. But this particular vehicle, this was the culprit. You know, we fix everything. It has a misfire after we test drive it. Customer picks it up, it's misfiring. This may be the same case as, as you're dealing with. The other thing that can get plugged up, there's a filter right here. You gotta check that, make sure that that is free of debris. But if you replace this whole assembly, it will come with a new filter, so you don't have to worry about that. Like I said, if we did this job again, we'd replace this manifold every single time with the lifters, the head gaskets as well. I do have one last note. The head gasket kit that we ordered came with everything. We found it on eBay. Everything looked good, everything was fine. 
but the gasket for the, the head gasket was a little bit different. So the difference was where it labeled front of the motor or front of the engine, there was a passageway of coolant that was actually blocked off by the gasket. So if you have the technician that is doing that job, make sure that the gasket, and I know this is pretty straightforward, but make sure that the gasket and all the holes line up exactly the same. If you're taking the head off, before you take the gasket off, take a picture of it, note all the passageways that it's either blocking or not blocking. And when you put the new gasket on, make sure it's exactly the same, make sure the picture that you took looks exactly the same because in our case there was a passageway that it was blocking so we had to switch even though it said front it actually didn't go on the front we had to actually switch that over so hopefully this helps somebody some of these tips um, that we had to deal with on this particular job so that you know maybe somebody else doesn't have the same issue so hope this helped thanks guys